I'm Ross Large, a distinguished professor at the University of Tasmania working in codes and earth sciences. I'm a professor of economic geology, but in the last few years I've become interested in a more fundamental area of science, which is the chemistry of the ocean through time and how that has affected ore deposit evolution and evolution of life. The big progress that Darwin made, obviously, was being able to see the steps involved in evolutionary change. And the other important aspect of survival of the fittest, of the strongest, the most robust species, being those that could survive and adapt to an environmental change. Now part of what we're doing is looking at the chemistry of the ocean and looking at those environmental changes. And we're finding, to our surprise, that the chemical environmental changes were far more dramatic than we would have believed, and I think Darwin would have believed too. We've concentrated on selenium, which is not very much known about, but it turns out that it's vital for life. We've found that at certain periods, and they're only very narrow periods in Earth history, selenium dropped so low in the oceans that it could well have caused some of the major mass extinction events. When you're looking back into the past, you're looking at thousands of years, millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. Within those long timescales, there's periods when very little was happening and then we get a change. Now that change, we think, relates back to major tectonic changes. Changes where continents may collide and build mountains that then erode and increase the amount of nutrients in the ocean. And if over a million years, those chemical species in the ocean double or increase tenfold, that has a dramatic influence on biological activity in the ocean. And that may lead to the sort of step changes that Darwin needed in his evolutionary story. The really exciting thing is that we're building a database of information about the chemistry of the ocean that's never been available before. Really what's driven this research is the facilities we have in our laboratories, such that we've now got the best laboratories for this type of research in the world. And without those laboratories, and the very good technical team we've got working in those labs, there's no way we'd be able to do this line of research. We can get a record right through time of how things have changed. Uh, and that's the excitement of geology, that we're looking through back to 3.6 billion years. Fantastic.